diminished scale. It's a powerful multi-tool, but unlike normal multi-tools, it doesn't involve manual labor. So I love it. Let's get cracking. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to make all your skills 5G compatible. Now, I've been away for a while, and I do apologize about that. I've been busy teaching in my online studio, but I'm back now to give away lots more free content and get you practicing. So I think it's time we resume weekly lessons. I'll give you all the exercises you need to practice and lots of free goodies, and you put in all the hard work. Sound fair? I hope so. So let's pick up where we left off with part three of our Scales Masterclass. Now, before we begin, be sure you download the free worksheet, which has all the exercises we're going to be using today for the link down below and just click download. Now, you may be wondering, what is a diminished scale? Well, it's simply two tetrachords stacked to tritone apart. Obviously. Another way to think about it is a simple scale pattern that alternates half steps and whole tones. Half step, whole step, half step, whole step, and it repeats, creating an interesting scale with a lot of cool tension and dissonance. To help better visualize this, let's head over to the piano and take a look at just a normal C major scale. And on the piano, we see that there are two half steps, one between the third and fourth scale degree, and the other between the seventh, leading to the octave. And that seventh note is what we call the leading tone because that half step makes it lead to the octave. Now let's take a look at the diminished scale on the piano starting on C. And here we can see that pattern of alternating half steps and whole steps. Now unlike the major scale, which only has two half steps, this scale has four half steps, twice as many as the major or a minor scale, which creates a very dynamic and at times dissonant sound. Now it should be noted there's two varieties of the diminished scale or two ways of talking about them. You can think about them starting with a whole step, then half step, whole step, half step, or what we're doing today is a half step, whole step diminished scale. If that's already getting too complex for you, don't worry. Just look at the exercises in the free worksheet and these are all half step, whole step, which as a jazz saxophonist, I think are gonna be using these much more commonly. So when I use diminished scales, I generally think about just the half step, whole step or all the ones we're using in this exercise. Now the diminished scale has a lot of uses and a lot of different chords that it works beautifully over. To understand where to use it, we need to know a little bit about the history of the diminished scales, which brings us to 1953 with a young Genovian saxophonist named Heinrich von Blue Skalsen. Now Heinrich was invited to play in a YouTube collaboration playing the tune Caravan as a sextet, and he noticed on the scale sheet, or the chord chart rather, there was an A7 flat 9. And this is where he became confused. His major scale didn't work, the mixolydian mode didn't work very well, and he didn't know what to play. So he started the Baron Dynamic Foundation for Acoustic and Melodic Principles and put his best scientists on the task. And they came up with a scale that works beautifully over altered dominance. And this is the diminished scale. <laughs> and you don't even have to wait for an altered dominant to use this scale. You can also use it over just normal dominant chords. You don't even have to check with your rhythm section. Remember, they work for you. It works in a variety of situations as long as you don't overdo it, like the blues scale. So let's take a look at these three scales and talk about the optimal fingerings you're gonna be using while practicing these. First up is the D, F, A flat, and B half hold diminished scale. It's the same scale for all four notes. You just start on different notes. Now you'll notice here that there's an F to F sharp, but I do not want you using the side F sharp key. Don't use the chromatic fingering for this. When practicing the scale, I want you to make sure you're using the normal F sharp. Now that is gonna have you doing finger flipping. That's okay. When you do these exercises, that's exactly what I want you to do. Next up is the E flat, F sharp, A, and C diminished. One scale covers four different key areas. How convenient is that? Here we have a B flat, but I actually want you to use the biz key fingering, not the side B flat fingering. The biz key is gonna be more efficient for the variety of patterns we're gonna be using. So this is a good chance to practice your biz B flat fingering on this scale. <laughs> And finally, we have the E, G, B flat, D flat diminished scales. And here I want you to practice using the side B flat fingering because we have the motion of B flat 
to B, and we wanna use the most efficient fingering possible, which in this case is the side key. Hey, Wally, I'm the biz key. Just slide right off me. No, we don't wanna slide off the biz key. Oh, come on, it's super easy. Just give it a try. Nope, not an efficient fingering. Come on, just slide right off me. Just slide. Use the side B flat. Now, before we get to the exercises, let's talk about how to practice scales in the jazz idiom. We've talked about this before, but a little refresher won't hurt. First, as always, whenever we practice a scale, we practice it slurred. Then we tongue the off beats, slurring to down beats with a slight air accent. Now, as you speed these up, make sure it's not the tongue creating the accent, but air. We don't want to hear a heavy tongue sound. So as you get faster, your tongue stays just as light, but we're giving a push of air to create the swing accents. Now we've got some demonstrations of all these exercises on alto this week. I'll be back next week with tenor exercises as well. So practice these slowly, get them under your fingers, and if you have any questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments below. I'll be back next week with part four of our Scales Masterclass series. I've missed you. I hope you're having a great new year. Now go practice.